Hello, Pleasers, and welcome back to another episode of Face to Face, where we get up close and personal with the innovators and educators of sexual wellness and pleasure. And today I am so excited. We have an amazing chemist, PhD, and world-renowned, I, I would call you world-renowned natural health expert. Um, well, I think you're going to be world-renowned. How about if we say that? Yeah, that's uh, better. That's better to say. Uh, who has found the blueprint of life, the elixir of the gods, the lipid of youth, <laughs> a master cell regulator that I'm just super excited to share with you today. So welcome, um, doctor. And I always say your name wrong. So I call you Dr. Ragu, Ragu like everyone else. Um, I'd love for you to share. First of all, thank you so much for being here and for sharing this amazing product and some of the science behind it. But I would love to just share with the pleasers a little bit about your background because you have such an interesting and diverse, you know, array of what ended up bringing you to this area of natural health and, you know, supplements when you came from pharmacology and chemistry. Yeah. So I, I came to this country in 1973, January, having came to Oregon. Uh, idea was, of course, higher education to do PhD, but you know most of the students were coming from there, uh, from India for that. But more importantly, to discover, to get trained in drug research, and hopefully find a drug. You know, that was the eventual goal. So after I finished my PhD in organic chemistry, I worked in uh, what you call natural antibiotics. You know, that was my thesis. I, I went to Germany in, uh, in Max Planck Institute in Germany. Spent two and a half years, three years there, learning about DNA damage and photochemistry and all that stuff. Then spent a couple of years in Columbia University, uh, you know, part-time uh, tuition, whatever you want to call it, like a tutor, but uh, worked in the area of uh, uh, eye research, you know, it's about people who have eye problems. Then I started working for uh, Sibagagi in those days. Today it's called Novartis. But, uh, and then I worked in all areas and learned how the pharma works. And then I worked in Boring and Ingelheim. At the time I worked in the area of HIV research, you know, making molecules. But I learned a lot. One of the things I learned was uh, what was wrong with the way we were doing research, you know, like especially HIV, for example, when I used to look at the, the clinical data that you know people used to talk about it. I wasn't part of it, but uh, I, you know, I could attend meetings where I saw this. The people's uh, a lot of important things like potassium, sodium, selenium, you know, vitamin C, vitamin D were all very low in these patients, and nobody nobody cared about supplementing or improving that, you know, because the focus was on making a drug, doesn't matter. Something CD4 level went up, we got FDA approval, made money and that was it. Yep. That's when the first interest was kindled for me, you know, that the, what we are doing uh, in pharma that I saw, there was something wrong. And you know, I didn't know what was wrong, but I knew there was a different solution. There had to be, otherwise, because the way I looked at it, there are 120 drugs to treat hypertension in the world today, you know? Right. But if you look at the number of people with hypertension, it's constantly increasing. So only the only one explanation for it, we're doing something wrong. Very simple. There's no two ways. Because if one of them worked, just one, it will put the other 119 out of business. Right. <laughs> and that's not happening. <laughs> you know, it's not happening at all. Yeah. So, so everybody is on the wrong track. Yeah. But, but the confirmation came much later for me that, you know, I was on the right track because there was a guy, uh, Craig Venter. Oh, he, yeah. I know Craig. He did his, oh, yeah. He, his own uh, genome, genome sequence. And he found out that, hey, you know, we got only 20 or 25,000 genes. The rest is all bacteria, virus, and so on. Yeah. That's when the, the, it hit me home because if you do the simple math that we know today, for every so-called human gene, which is actually human genes are, a lot of them are very similar to animal genes, you know, pigs and monkeys and so on. For every human gene, there are 360 bacterial genes. So if you assume we are 20,000 genes, you multiply by 360, you got 7.2 million genes. Right. And somehow 
everybody's saying, oh, I have, I'm finding a drug for this or that disease and so on. It's a one in 7.2 million. Even assuming 99% is still one in 72,000 or something like that. It's a huge. Uh, so the, the, the statistics are, you know, against you. You have a better chance of winning in Las Vegas than this lottery. But where do you begin? You know, this is where in 97 or so, I think I was attending some meeting in New York City. There was a guy from a Center for the Innovation of Medicine, and he happened to be MD, PhD, and he mentioned in the, his lecture that during his lifetime, there would be a simple nutraceutical that would do the job of many drugs. This was his comment at the end of the thing. So what, year, everybody, what year was this? 97, I think, you know. Oh, okay. But when he said that, everybody laughed, everybody clapped, you know, said goodbye. <laughs> but that word stuck in my head. I said, this guy, MD, PhD, saying it, you know. And people were, you know, laughing at him for saying it. I said, what if he is right? Maybe he's onto something subconsciously, you know. And that's when my quest started. So I started reading. Uh, the first thing that I stopped reading, uh, you know, basic chemistry at that time, because I didn't want, I wanted to, get rid of all the things I'd learned. <laughs> and then the, when I read this uh, Hippocrates Oath, mm -hmm. uh, and it said, uh, he who does not understand food cannot heal the diseases of men. That's right. And if you look at American food, it's in, today it's 80% GMO, <clears throat> yep. but all the diseases increased when the food got processed more and more. So the answer to me was in the food that we ate and in the environment and so on. Like our water is all fluoride. So much fluoride we add, but we don't need fluoride. No, it hurts our pituitary <laughs> gland. <laughs> yeah, it also affects the thyroid. thyroid because, right. Yeah. So if we can change the food and you know supply, then we can do it. But that's a big task. Why not have a food that at least something that is missing from our food that would then do something to help with the, you know, disease. Yeah, the missing how, link. <laughs> the missing link. You know, it's like the chimpanzee was the missing link. Right, right. In 2004, I, I, the, one of the first things that hit me was, I said, look at your own family, you know. One of the things I noticed in my family was my grandfather on both my, you know, fathers and mother's side, when, when they died, you know, they died, they, they lived well. You know, given India was poor in those days, they lived a long life. Given all the bacterial diseases we have, viral diseases we have, all the filth, everything, they lived well. And then my generation, my father's generation lived well. They lived pretty old. But one of the thing, two, two key things I noticed was in my grandfather's generation, nobody ever died of cancer. You know? mm. In my father's generation, nobody ever died of cancer. In my generation, we have many people out of 23 persons I have wow. who have had cancer. One of them died of cancer. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that. Who had, had, a, you know, had a tryst with cancer. Yeah. And some of the common things that came up was uh, all these people, my uh, generation, grandfather and uh, my father's generation, they never ate processed food because it was not available. But we had access to processed food. Luckily, I didn't have access to processed food until I came to this country. So the first 20 years, my immune system was good. I never suffered any, you know, any, any diseases worth mentioning. But this is where I think I knew it was in the processed food. And then when I was talking to my one of the survivors, who happens to be my uncle, who was 94, my father's eldest brother, and he mentioned that, hey, you know what? There's a temple in India where they worship sugarcane. I said, what do you mean sugarcane? He says, jaggery. It's 56 years old. So he said, it cures, they believe that temple, mythology of the temple, is they believe that it cures 4,448 diseases. That's the mythology of the temple there. You know? They don't know, I don't know how they got that number, but they have come This up is the it. doctor's temple you're talking about, right? Yeah, that's doctor's a, temple. That's in the South translation? India. Okay. Doctor's yeah. temple in South India. Yeah. Cool. And then... The same day I meet a friend who had brought somebody along who happened to be a doctor who mentioned the fact that he works in a sugar factory or something and he noticed that the executives had all the metabolic diseases like hypertension, diabetes and so on, obesity. 
but the workers didn't. I said, what's the difference? You know, he says the executives are cheap bastards because they, they eat refined sugar, but they give jaggery to the workers, you know, this unrefined sugar. Lucky them. Lucky them. And then I said, you know, immediately I had, this was the time, it's not the Eureka moment for me. I like, boom, like a shot going through my, you know, in front of my face. He said, that's it. I know what it is. Mm. Because I, knowing the organic chemistry, I knew what it was. Yeah. The next step was to find out the people who will make it, make that stuff. I knew what it was. It was coming from the skin of sugar cane. Okay. And uh, make it into something water soluble. Yeah. Because that's the problem with that was it was not water soluble. See, we, in a lot of tropical countries where sugar cane grows, people just chew the sugar cane. Yeah. We don't remove the skin. Mm. And therefore, when you chew it, you also get the protective effect. And that's how, when we started doing the rat study and all that, then in 2008, we formed the company, I formed the company. And somehow, as things would have it, I sold whatever I had I could and started this company with all my consulting business, put everything into it. Wow. So that That's the risk I took, but you know. That's the belief you we, had. We have, been, we have been lucky so far because it it's proved that, you know, what we are doing was right. Yes, it has. I have to tell you, I'm so impressed. And I, I, I'm a bit of a geek doctor. So I've read a lot of clinical studies through the years. And, you know, of course, <laughs> there's one clinical study saying one thing. You can find another one saying another thing. But I got good at, you know, understanding mechanisms of action and seeing things that you can measure in the body that actually do indicate an improvement in health. And so I'm I'm really excited because I've read a recent clinical study of yours and thank you so much for going through that story and that process in your life to bring us this amazing um, lipid. I know that from talking with Richard, lipid is probably the best way to, to describe it. Right. right. And that you're about to publish a new, a new study, right. In which you talked about HIV and HSV and HPV, which is herpes simplex virus, herpes papillomavirus, and um, you know everybody knows what HIV is. So I'd love for you to just share a little bit um, of the research on how polycosinol in this nano form, you know what what you found in your clinical study, because we, you know we're talking about sexual health and wellness. So I think what is the percentage of the population that has herpes simplex virus? It's it's pretty high. I mm-hmm. think it's over 50%, if I'm not mistaken. And HPV, so HPV is like 85. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's every virus, every lipid, every bacteria, every uh, fungi, they have a lipid layer. Okay. And the problem that uh, most scientists are making is to brute, in trying to kill a, which is it's very small, they kill an ant with a bulldozer, you know? Right. Yeah. What we do is we simply go, when the viruses enter your body uh, or bacteria, somehow it fools the body into accepting you by presenting certain one of its faces, which turns out to be like a food. And your cell, if it is not smart, will allow it to get in. And then it begins to multiply. So it's the same principle here. I offer food to the viruses, bacteria, and fungi, and they love it. But when I go in, when the product goes in, it disturbs the lipid, breaks open the lipid. The minute it breaks open the lipid, the virus is dead. The virus don't have independent existence. They need to be inside a cell, you know? Yeah. And so, so in, the cel- in the cellular world, we call that apoptosis, right? When, a, when yeah. an unhealthy cell dies. Mm-hmm. So it kind of like the virus cell is dying after the lipid is penetrating. Is that basically Correct. what's happening? Yes. Okay. It just breaks up. It's just- like... See, one of the ways in biochemistry they do is when they want to kill, uh, you know, denature DNA, they actually add detergents, you know, mm. in cells. In cells, you, you add detergents, it breaks up the cell. Wow. Okay. That's exactly what we're doing. We're, it's a, this is a detergent for the body, basically. What? So, and so clearly, sir, number one, you, you don't want the virus to get into your healthy cells, right? Just like it, the virus really doesn't want polycosinol to get into its cell, but it gets tricked. But once it does get into the cell, then it proliferates and Correct. which means makes more of itself and Correct. then gets out into more cells and starts to. So once Absolutely. it gets into that cell before it proliferates, does it kill that cell, a virus? 
Yeah, it'll kill that cell, but because it's it, it, when it kills the cell, it, it, the cell breaks out, you know. And then it all the all the contents of the cell pour through your body. They could be toxins, whatever there, because the cell all our cell also contains a lot of toxin, which is used to kill anybody that comes in. Yeah, yeah. So all that stuff is exposed. So you know, we we, we get into a, a situation where so many cells are dying, so many toxins are being released. They call this. It's like. They call this a cytokine storm. You know, cytokine it, storm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And so in the cases of things like HPV or your herpes simplex virus, where people have, we'll call them random outbreaks. Some say people say stress brings it on, or some people say certain dietary things bring it on. But once they have this virus present, I know in HPV, it, it, in 50% of the can, cases, it can heal itself, right? It can, your body can mm -hmm. rid it. But herpes simplex virus seems to be more complex. So what does something like nanosoma do to support the body? And how does somebody suffering with one of those viruses benefit? It does the same thing. You know, it, see, when it binds to, we have shown that it binds to the vitamin D receptor, the body, which is present in chromosome 12 of our body, right? It's a vitamin D receptor. What, what, once it activates, see, what the viruses do is very simple. To survive in the body, they go and block the vitamin D receptor. Because that vitamin D receptor is only one responsible for your innate immunity, you know. Mm, the killer T cells. Body's first line of defense. The okay. 40's first line of defense. Once it goes, they begin to multiply. For example, mm -hmm. HIV completely blocks the vitamin D receptor. Completely. That's why it's lethal you know, over time. Tuberculosis reduces the amount of uh, activity of the vitamin D receptor by about 32 fold. So only 3% is active. Some of the smarter ones will not kill the white, block completely the vitamin D receptor. Because if you have no immunity or die, they have to find they another have no host. <laughs> yeah, they are they, you know, they're also victims. Yeah, they kill themselves. Yeah. 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 So so they block it, block it enough so that they can multiply, but they don't kill you. Okay. And so what we do is. This product nano is so small because it's 48 nanometers, 50 nanometer. It can go into the cell because cells are lipids. So it goes in easily. And then wherever the virus is bound to the vitamin D receptor in the chromosomes or cells, whatever, it displaces the, the virus. Mm. Then it triggers the vitamin D. And what it does is it produces, the way it produces, it, it's an antibiotic factor. You know, that it produces antimicrobial peptides, as we call it. AMPs. They're AMPs, called. okay. It, it can do millions and millions of antibiotics in a matter of few hours. Wow. From that, it'll test each one against whichever virus or bacteria it is. Mm -hmm. Once that is done, it goes into action, kills it, presents the pieces of it to the next stage, which is your adaptive immunity. So the next time it happens, your body's ready. It's ready. This is what we call natural immunity. Correct. Right, which nobody seems to realize is, exists anymore. <laughs> but we won't get into that. So if I'm a sufferer, which I'm not, but I'm just saying, if I were a sufferer of something like HSV or herpes simplex virus, and I'm taking something like nanosoma, does that mean I have fewer outbreaks likely? Absolutely. Okay. So it's, seen that. It's, it's going to make... Could it could it get rid of it? To, could my body get rid of herpes simplex virus altogether? I know it can do that with HPV. It's been shown. Absolutely, it okay. should. It should because see the idea is the vitamin D receptors and a few other nuclear receptors. Vitamin D especially is like a vacuum cleaner. It cleans your system because the body's most important reason why we you know we survive is because of innate immunity, body's first line of defense. Right, which is why we need viruses. Yes. To train our body to do this. Okay. Yeah. And wait, can you share with me? I was asking Dr. Presser, you said the amount of viruses and bacteria in our body is one, zero, 10. And then how many zeros? Yeah. It's the number of viruses in the universe <laughs> yeah. is 10 followed by 33 zeros. Oh my Lord. That's a lot of zeros. And the number of bacteria is 10 followed by 32 zeros. I, I don't know the count for fungi and parasites. A lot of them are not even known. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, we are 10 to the power of 10 followed by nine zeros, the number of human beings, maybe 10 zeros. Wow. So we are a minority in the world of microbes. If you are not there, the microbes will take over. No, no problem. They'll eat everything up. 
So we need to defend ourselves. The only way you cannot go and fight with somebody who has 50,000 weapons and you got one weapon. Right. <laughs> it's not possible. The numbers are against you. Yeah. So the only way you're going to do is to defend yourself by strengthening yourself rather than wasting time trying to kill this virus or that bacteria and so on. Right. And innate immunity is the way. And the key is food. You know, the right food gives you the right immunity. Yeah. So I want to talk about like some proper expectations for the product because, you know, number one, some of us are more ill than others, right? Mm -hmm. We have more dis-ease than others. Some of us are older. Some of us just have more complications and health issues. And so when somebody starts to take something like this food substance, that's so nourishing to our bodies and system, I've heard it's like the body naturally triages itself, right? So it's going to, it's going to take whatever that polycostal, wherever it needs to be most in that moment. And it's going to go to that source. I might want it to help me lose 10 pounds, but my body Mm. might say, no, her thyroid needs support (laughs) first as an example, which probably a bad example, because if my thyroid supported, I probably would lose weight. But nonetheless, there's just one dose. So for the most part, right, for most people, it's we, we, we talked about a little bit just to show people one of the things I love about Nanosoma is the simplicity of it to comply. You know, I work with supplements for a long time and to get people to meaningfully comply with the doctor's orders is sometimes tough, whether it's pharmacology or natural supplements, but this is a spray. That's a dose, right? Yes. Five sprays mm-hmm. once a day. Yeah. And is this all we need? No, you can take more. I mean, I, I have done, I've taken up to finish one bottle in one day. I experimented with all those things. But when you have especially if you have infectious disease, it's better to take a few more, you know, a couple of times a day to get rid of it because the viruses also multiply much faster, you know. Ah, okay. Whereas things like bacteria are slow moving, you know, like uh, diabetes are slow moving. So, you know, see, for example, for you to get diabetes, it it takes about 10 years before it hits you. But if you go and around people who are like, for example, today who are waxed and they can tell the spike protein immediately, you feel miserable if you are around back people with diabetes you're not going to get diabetes <laughs> yeah it's not contagious diabetes yeah so, it's so, years so, of abuse. so when you get viral disease like that it's better to spray as much as you want you know one one or two days and allow the body to really fight it you know? okay so a little more can be good at certain times yeah yeah and you can't overdose right oh you can see so you have to take uh, our calculation is uh, the LD50, this is called the lethal dose, uh, is about 5,000 milligrams per kilo, which is five grams per kilo. Okay. So a 60 person who's 60 kilograms, uh, it's about 60 kilograms of 130 pounds person, he would need to take 300 grams of the product in one day to get a lethal dose. Wow. Okay. 300 grams. That's a lot. And if you calculate it, that's a 25 year supply of this product. <laughs> so, first of all, you can't do 25,000 bottles in one day. You know, yeah, you yeah. won't have time for it. Yeah. Nobody, you got time, time for that. <laughs> you won't be in the bathroom half the time because you, there's so many, it's 98% water in anyway. you. Yeah. 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 So you, like, you, you can. And people say, well, this happened, that happened. But that's a healing reaction. People confuse, for example, if you have a cold, it's your immune system working to get rid of something. But what we do is we go and take an antibiotic and kill that process where it is finding out what it is and then giving it to adaptive immunity so that it remembers the next time that happens, you know? And so the next time the, the bacteria comes, it becomes more mutant because it will also fight back. Of course, it learns, it gets smarter how to, how to mount its own response. Correct. Yeah. No, I've been preaching this for years. So we, we got to stop taking shit we don't need. <laughs> I see. That's why in hospitals all over the world, yeah. there's so much antibiotic being administered that people are producing and breathing out resistant bacteria. Resistance. That's why you have something like MRSA infection to pick up in a hospital. Maybe right. you know, very common. For sure. For sure. Um, so, okay. I, I'm so glad. And thank you so much for sharing that about the viral thing. And, you know, of course, we focus on 
HPV and HSV and HIV right now, but this really applies to any virus. Should we just yes, say that? Absolutely. Okay. Yes, so pay attention, people. We're talking about viruses here and the immune system and the importance of its function. Now, I want to switch gears just a little bit, if it's okay with you, and talk about cardiovascular health. Um, because here in, in our sexual wellness world, there's two main contributing factors for function, right? Actual physical function, especially for men. And that is cardiovascular health, the oxygen blood flow through the body. And the other is hormone regulation, right? Mm -hmm. So whether that's testosterone or whether that's estrogen and progesterone for women, um, proper thyroid function, et cetera, um, we're looking at those two body systems. So let's just touch briefly on, on when polycosinol is in this nano form in your very special formulation. And by the way, not just any polycosinol will, will do the same things that nano does, right? There's lots of polycosinol out there. I mean, we'll get into your formulation in a minute, but let's just talk about the cardiovascular benefits um, and, and general wellness, right? Which then impacts our mental health and wellness. But, but let's, let's start with the physical stuff. You're already, you're overweight. You, you have a little high blood pressure. Your circulation is starting to fail. You're getting a little erectile dysfunction if you're a guy. And if you're a woman, you know, your hormone levels are out of balance. You don't have the desire. Maybe you're not functioning properly down there from a preparation perspective. Maybe you're losing your hair. Maybe you're gaining weight. Maybe you're feeling fatigued. What does having this proper nutrient in the body help the body do in those in those categories? See, the first thing that we have seen over the last 12 years of people taking the product, the first thing everybody has mentioned to me is how the energy level went up, mm. which mm. means it's fixing the mitochondria, which is the power plant of our body. Because from the mitochondria, the energy is supplied to the cells to get the energy. And once that happens, then the cell has enough energy to do its job. So the, the processes begin to happen. That's the first thing that happens. The second thing we have noticed is that everybody's blood pressure normalizes very quickly. Within a week, maybe three to six weeks, everybody. Very rare. And that's what is happening there is that one of the things we have published in our patent, first one is that it increases nitric oxide in rats. When nitric oxide, you know, reduces the blood pressure. It's also involved in, uh, in Viagra's nitric oxide. Right, I know, yep. So those two things happen. Then the fact is that because your mitochondria is working now, what the metabolism is improving. Right. So what happens is that you, over time, I'm not saying it's going to happen right away, but over time in a, in a six month, 12 month period, you will begin to see, for some people much sooner, especially those who are very obese, they will feel it. That what, let's say you had four slices of pizza, suddenly you find you can't eat more than one. I already, I started feeling that within the first three days. Uh -huh. And in the first two weeks of taking the product, I uh -huh. lost four pounds. I know some of that was water weight uh -huh. and I was already doing a 1200 calorie restricted diet. Um, no exercise, by the way, other than just walking in general things my appetite completely changed. Yes. I was not hungry at lunch. I was eating smaller portions at dinner. I do not want sugar. Um, alcohol. Oh my God. The first time I had a drink of alcohol after a week in nanosoma, I thought I was going to have a headache and a stomach ache at this. Like immediately my body went, no, you don't. And the next day I felt terrible. And I also noticed bowel movement changes gut changes. Like I could hear my stomach girdling around. Like I was like, what's going on down there? You know, but it started to happen for me very quickly and I'm not obese. You know, I'm actually I'd like to lose about another seven pounds, but I don't, I definitely don't fall into that body mass index, but I noticed it right away, right away. Some people will notice right away, but the more obese you are, the faster you will lose weight to get to the optimum level very quickly, very quickly. And what will happen is your metabolism is improved. So you were driving a car which was giving 20 miles a gallon. Suddenly the car is giving you 50 miles a gallon. It doesn't need so much fuel. <laughs> this is what is happening. Totally. So what happens is the body then moves and says, okay, I don't need the food, but I because I have the stored fat, I'm going to burn it. Right. And the key is uh, the heart, you know, for example, uses fat for its energy requirements, not sugar. Okay. Yeah. So, 
So if you begin to burn the fat that you're stored, immediately lose weight. Wow. This is great. So the great stored news. energy is all removed. The other thing we also seen in people, a few of them, you know, uh, is the more obese you are, your testosterone level is low. Yep. Because the triglycerides and testosterone are related. That's right. What happens is as the, the triglycerides level come down, you will notice that your testosterone level goes up. I mean, we really? had a guy, yeah, yeah, we had a couple of cases of people who had to, they didn't want to, when they send their blood report, they wouldn't send me the testosterone report. After two years, I found out, you know, he told me. That's when I came to know because they're linked. See, obesity is linked to testosterone levels. I did not know that about triglycerides being responsible yeah. for lower testosterone. That's interesting. And this guy, he was, uh, he had a testosterone level, which was, I don't know, equivalent that of a 64 year old person. He was only 54. Wow. But when he went through after three, four months of this product, his testosterone level was that of a 46 year old. Is that from the weight loss of the mitochondria or is that more like the thyroid and the liver? Well, if you don't have a thyroid problem, liver problem, then it has to do with the triglyceride. This okay. guy didn't have that; those two problems. You know? Got it. So it depends on each person. If there's a complex set of comorbidities, then a lot of things need to be fixed before a testosterone level will go up. You know? For sure. And for women, so what about menopause and you know women going into menopause? Yeah, we we had people who had you know irregular menopause. 29, 30-year-old women could be, I don't know what the reasons were. Uh, we have quite a few testimonials about it, how it got normalized within a month after five, six years. Wow. And we had a case, two or three cases I've seen in when we're doing marketing in uh, uh, Malaysia, you know, uh, that this woman uh, was postmenopausal. Yeah. And then she became normal. So her periods became normal. So they returned. Yes, for a year and a half. And then she went through that and then finally became postmenopausal. But yeah. this this was a inter very interesting. She felt nothing. Wow. So awesome. people think that, you know, you should become postmenopausal 50, 52. No, no, it's nothing to do with that. It's a lot of other factors that go in. So it does. One of the things we have seen across the board from a lot of these patients we have seen. I mean, we did a study in India. It's still going on where their periods are becoming normal you know, very quickly. That hormonal imbalance, this is what we talk about. Yeah, I had dysmenorrhea when I was young and I didn't get my period till I was 17. And then when I did, I got one period every three months for three years. So it wasn't until I was in my 20s that I even had a regular period. But I, I noticed the one thing that changed it was nutrition. When I became a vegetarian and I stopped, you know, took out a lot of different toxics and I for one whole year I did a very healthy regimen and it totally regulated my period boom just like that so this is very interesting and I know we only have about about five or ten more minutes with you and I want to number one you mentioned something earlier and I think it's really critical for people especially if they're taking a new and powerful product and that is something called a healing response and I think people go oh this product is making me sick and I go, that means it's working. So I, I just like to set proper expectations because I know everybody's going to leave this interview and go, I want some nanosoma right now. Um, and yeah. I, I want them to understand, you know, what the process is in like the first couple of weeks. We, we have seen this in people, especially with, you know, skin problems, as an example, yeah. where what we see is, uh, you know, people who have acne, okay, mm -hmm. when they start using the product, suddenly acne increases. Oh, you see that it went bad. Mm -hmm. But what's happening is actually, it is pulling out all the viruses that is causing the acne, okay? Yeah. Out of its system. And since this happens to be the place, it's going to show up here. It's going to show up briefly, you know, maybe a couple of days, maximum a week, but then it goes away. And it happens the same thing with many other diseases, the different functions, you know? People, people may have uh, some gastric problems. Initially, you know, they may get diarrhea. It's actually, we found out that uh, uh, people who, who got COVID, for example, you know, when they take our product, uh, this we have seen in India, uh, the doctors told me that uh, a lot of people get diarrhea in the first day. Yeah. The diarrhea eliminates the, the virus. Yeah. Well, I, I, I didn't have COVID. <laughs> <laughs> but I did notice a change, definite change in my ball habits to, to looser. So what it is doing is this, people need to understand, the, you, over your lifetime, 
you acquired a chemical store in your body. A lot of them don't belong there. You know, this is called surplus material, what I call it, surplus. <laughs> and so the, this is going to go through the system, it's going to eliminate the surplus materials. So it's a process. So it could be through, uh, you might get a cold, you know, you might get a cough, you may get a uh, you know, sweat, tears mm -hmm. in your eyes. Mm -hmm. Tired. Uh, itches, Tired. Flu-like yeah. symptoms, like a little lethargic. Yeah. Yeah. So you see, sometimes what the what the what it, what it does is it says, okay, I'm going to tire you because I want you to rest, rest. before I can pick something. Mm -hmm. That's a healing process. People say, I got so tired and fatigued because I took this product. Now the body is telling you something. Hey, exactly. Take a break, lie down. Yeah. I want to fix the problem. Yeah. And the other thing I noticed some people saying, and 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 in myself too, is I, I was more thirsty. It's like my body wanted some help to 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 flush out toxins. Of course, try not to drink fluoride water. Let's get some good pure water here, people. But but yeah, I noticed a, a little more thirst. I drink a lot of water ever since I started with this, you know, a lot of water. Yeah. Your body craves it, right? It's like yeah. it's talking to you. The way you look at it is this, the people, you know, why this product works, this is something I'm recently, you know, putting a theory together, is if you look at an average person, 72% of his, 70 to 75% of body is water. Mm. Average person. Could be some people, some people may be 65, whatever. But if you, if you calculate this in terms of, so the number of water molecules, you know, there's a way to calculate, it's called Avogadro number, 10 to the power of 23. 18 grams of water contain 10 to the power of 10 followed by 23 zeros of water molecules. Wow. Almost as many as the viruses and bacteria in the world. Correct. <laughs> and your body has, <laughs> if you calculate based on that, your body is over 99.6% water molecules. Not water, but water molecules. Same way our product is 99.8% or 9% water molecules. There's so little of our product there. That's why water is so essential for life. I mean, you can be without food for some time, but you can't be without water. Right. I think it's three days, right? For water yeah, and like tw 20 or 30 days for food. Yeah. Yeah. And and Gandhi, Gandhi has experimented with that. So, you know, his, his life is full of all the fats he took, but he yeah. always drank water. Yeah. And sleep is another thing that people can't go without. People who use this product over time will get very good sleep. The reason is when you eat uh, proteins like tryptophan, for example, which is amino acid. Yeah. Tryptophan is converted to serotonin. Then serotonin becomes melatonin. And I always tell people when you eat food, don't eat at 10 o'clock. <laughs> 10 to 11 is when your body actually produces melatonin. <laughs> so if you're just eating, if you're eating at 11 o'clock, your body is not producing melatonin. <laughs> so people, my grandfather always ate at sunset. And then, this is very critical, he always ate at sunset. And then the protein, your body would then have tryptophan, amino acid, assuming your immune system is good. Then you have we, have we have our product producing vitamins, recycling vitamin C in the body. To convert tryptophan to serotonin, you need vitamin C. Otherwise, it's not going to happen. Yes, it's the cofactor. It's the most important cofactor. That's why people over life lifetimes, you know, oh, I couldn't sleep, I couldn't sleep. But they're not producing enough vitamin C. But this product will be triggering the body to recycle vitamin C. And it's recycling vitamin C. It's like an environmental. Now, otherwise, most people, the vitamin C just goes in the urine. That's it, you know. So once that happens, you're able to produce serotonin and serotonin to melatonin again. The same thing happens, you know. So you get sleep. And I get very good sleep, six hours, maybe seven hours sometimes, but very deep sleep. Wow. My body must be very good at creating serotonin. <laughs> I've always slept like a rock. So I can't, I'm not a good one to ask, but I, I know some people really suffer from not being able to sleep and they suffer. We had a guy in England, uh, uh, when a friend of ours, he hadn't slept well for 25 years. He would be up two, three, four in the morning. He told me that the first spray he took, the very next day, he slept like a baby for nine hours. He said it was... 
he couldn't describe it because the guy, you know, somebody who don't sleep when they get sleep, it is, you know, money in the bank, you know? Yeah. Um, speaking of that, you just triggered a, a memory, you know, a lot of women don't sleep at night that are going through menopause because of the hot flashes and the waking up. So does that kind of diminish too? Have, have you seen that in, in patients where the night sweats and the hot flashes diminish? Yeah, I told you that lady, in, you know, who, used to, who had was going through menopause and she reversed herself, then she was able to glide through back to uh, postmenopause. She had no issues. So, so the, 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 the horrible symptoms that we deal with kind of abate then at that, least in the, in the few cases that, that you've we, seen we have seen in yeah. the, some of the doctors who told me they've they seen that happen yeah i want to talk about one last thing and then i promise I, i'll let you wrap up with whatever you want to share with the people but that is um the opposite of the other thing which is the healing response and or very rapid results with the product some people i i i've heard and seen in in talk groups they're like, oh, it's been 30 days and I don't see or feel anything. I'm not feeling more energy. I'm not feeling more this, not feeling more that. And um, in my history of, of, of healthcare, I, I used to tell people make a commitment for 90 days because it takes 90 days for all the cells to recycle the body. And you, if you really want to see full results, what, what, it, what is your suggestion with nanosoma? Is there? No, oh, there, are, there are people, very few numbers who haven't felt anything, mm -hmm. but what I tell them is if you have a baseline blood report, which we do, yep. and then you check it later, you see a lot of things have changed. Okay. No, you don't necessarily have to feel it. Because some people have problems deep and those need to get fixed before it rises to the surface. But it eventually happens. This is the one thing that I am unable to predict. How long does it take to fix a person who has certain condition, how will, how will the health condition improve? This I can't predict, but the rule of thumb I have is this, which I'm just uh, looking, telling you, if you're a 50 year old person, you're using nano every day, it takes about hundred weeks before your body comes to a beautiful natural balance, everything is balanced. So it's sort of two weeks to three weeks for every year of your life. It, it, it sometimes is very rapid, uh, in younger people, you know, because the immune system is still reasonably good. But generally, that's a rule of thumb. I mean, we have seen, for example, uh, in just about hair growth, we've had women who are young, like 30 to 35, who have a patch of, uh, you know, on their head. And they feel very embarrassed about it. Within eight to 10 weeks, it's completely grown. Then we have other women who are past 60, was taking much longer. So. Right. So you said two to three weeks for every week of your life? Yeah. Okay. Interesting. That's great help because I, you know, I think it's important for people to have proper expectations. And I used to say, you don't go to the gym in one day and come back looking like yeah. Arnold Schwarzenegger. It took you like 30 years or 50 it's, years it's, or 60 it's years. It's process to like this, that let's say if 10 people have diabetes, now the diabetes started somewhere and then resulted in diabetes. But the route that the, the road that people take to diabetes is different in different people. It's like going from New York to Chicago, there are many ways to get there. Some are faster, some are slower. You might be in one of the slower paths, but eventually it will happen, you know? Yeah. So I, I just want to, like, I remember there was a product too that I used, OPC3, I think you and I had talked about it, oligomeric proanthocyanidins, which probably had some polycosinol somehow in it because it came from red wine extract and pine bark extract and citrus extract, yeah. but there were certain people that depending on their health condition, I would say you absolutely need to be on this product. Like you yeah. need the help in your blood sugar support and you need the help in your blood pressure support. You need the help in your cardiovascular, left ejection fraction, reduction of inflammation. So I know everyone should take it, but like we mentioned diabetes, we mentioned menopause, we mentioned cardiovascular. What are some of the things that you're like, if you just, you, you would never want to go a day without taking this product. If right now you're suffering because your body's breaking down in this or that, or that area. I mean, other than this, I don't take anything. So I know you don't, but like people that have never taken it before. Yeah, but you have to understand, you know, people say, oh, I'm going to take this supplement, that supplement, yes. 10 other supplements. No, the problem is this, you got into the situation where you have deficiency in a certain supplement. The reason you have the deficiency is your immune system, you know, some of the genes that are produced are what is called as transporters or nutrient sensing genes. 
So you take a food like iron, you need a guy to pick up the iron, the gene to tell somebody to pick up the iron. We need it, you know. But for that, the immune system has to be working full blast. If, if it's not working, taking iron is just passing expensive urine. The second thing that people don't understand is if they take five or six or seven supplements, oh, I took vitamin C, vitamin D, and all that stuff, is you're creating a traffic jam in the body. You're having all these guys fight over receptor sites. You know? I agree with you. I stopped taking all my supplements actually. Now I only took nanosoma. I stopped eating half the food I was eating. So I have a half of a grocery bill, no more supplement bill. I'm actually saving $400 a month by taking <laughs> by taking nanosoma. But what I meant is like, if I have diabetes, you would say, oh my gosh, you should absolutely take nanosoma. If I have, you know, heart disease, you should absolutely take nanosoma. Like, is there, is there any, any dis- no, People are taking prescription drugs, you know, they can continue with the product. It's not a big deal. It's food after all, you know, it's not- but they, it gives them the opportunity at their own pace to slowly wean off. They need to make that decision themselves. Yeah, yeah, totally get that. Yeah, we're not diagnosing or treating any disease. I'm just saying it's very supportive for people that are diabetics, right? right. It's very Absolutely. supportive for people that have cardiovascular disease or some kind of a viral infection from an STD. I, I, this is like, I wouldn't want to live a day without it if I had any of those situations. Yeah. I, I had a friend in India. He said he has lives in Bombay and he told me, he has 12 bottles of nano, yeah, always has on his shelf, you know. Yeah. There are four people in this, uh, three, well, four members in his family, each has three of them. Yep. He says, the, if the thief comes, and he can steal everything except my nanosoma. He says. I just ordered 24 bottles. Everybody's getting nanosoma for Christmas <laughs> because I, that's what's going to, you know, be the most impact on their life. Yeah, it is. It is something that people don't understand in most countries. I mean, uh, Health is your true wealth. Totally. Once you have perfect health, the possibilities become endless. You know, today uh, I had to write an abstract for a, um, I'm talking at a World Cardiac Congress in India, some online next month. I had to do the abstract because I was focused because of nothing else is bothering me, right? I was able to do in exactly eight minutes, a one page abstract. And they're able to send it and pay the registration, everything was done, boom. It's not because you got any efficient, you got efficient because you nothing is distracting you. And this is true for a lot of people. They become better. And but what happens is once people, most people in this world don't know what is good health. They assume that you take this pill, that pill, you are good health. No, it's not good health. It's that feeling that when you get up in the morning, nothing is bothering you. Then that you feel with this over time. I mean, I, I feel it every day. I mean, and if anything goes from the normal, you will feel it even quicker, you know? Yeah, for sure. Because you know what it feels like to feel great. Correct. Or what we call homeostasis. Homeostasis, absolutely. <laughs> Optimal performance. That's another Correct. word for it. Well, thank yeah. you so much, doctor. Is there anything else that you feel that you'd want to share with us about nanosoma? But I'm going to give you the last words to the to the people here. No, we, have, we, 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 you know, we have done some work which are not published. And I have writer's block sometimes because so much information research we're doing where we, we, we have now shown that uh, people who have mental you know, issues, we, we are now, it seems to generate the genes that can fix it in the body, you know? Helps. Uh, That's great. Yeah, we had a lady with bipolar disorder. It was gone in uh, three, four days after 20 years. I wow. was shocked. I was shocked. But that, that's when I decided to find out which are the genes that are expressed. And I found out there's a certain gene which is overexpressed in our body, 6004. And this makes uh, like uh, branches in our nerve cells. The more branches you have, the more communication you have with different cells. Can so, you, if you can find a cure for narcissism? I don't know what that, they could happen. It could happen. We don't know yet. But the other we thing would be rich. Out, it does, it helps people to, to get off uh, who are uh, addicted to drugs. I'm talking about the bad kind. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it definitely helps. Yeah. And also people who have alcohol, too much alcohol, and totally. I tell people who are drinking alcohol late at night before you go to bed, put five sprays, 
Mm-hmm. At least you won't get a hangover in the morning. Oh, I love that. This is good news. I, I find other I don't even want to drink is, it. Other thing in Florida is especially in summer, you may have so many mosquitoes. So if you spray on your face, body, and something, no mosquitoes will come near you. Ooh, I'm from Minnesota where that's the state bird. Yeah. <laughs> we we have lots of mosquitoes. So when I go to India, first thing I do when I land is spray myself because this airport is full of uh, mosquitoes. Yeah. It doesn't matter what. Even the, they may have air conditioning. Even the mosquito says we need air conditioning too because outside is so hot. So I, I spray myself. And it does it. It keeps them all away. Yeah. That's awesome. I want to also just mention this new little product we got coming out that's smells so divine and i've been using now for a couple of weeks and don't i look like 10 years younger doctor absolutely <laughs> you saw me like two weeks ago actually it was yeah. right before i started taking the yeah, product so you know, it's here again the same thing mm-hmm. this is a water-based cream yeah we should, we should be in the store sometime this this month oh my god it's already can't. arrived in the u.s they're going to I've bottle got- 10 people waiting for it. I've told them about it and it's amazing. And even my it's a um, water base, it's a water base. It's not an oil base. Mm-hmm. Everything is natural there. Mm-hmm. By the way, did you find out what the, what that smell is? Vanilla. I love it. It's an organic vanilla from Madagascar. Yeah. And I have Ganesh here who really loves the vanilla. <laughs> uh-huh. So, you know, once you apply on your face, it it's it so vitamin C. Oh, which we Same love. Vitamin C is what gets the collagen to plump work. the skin back up. We yeah. want to get rid of our wrinkles, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely. This is how we do it. And it's so good. Like, literally, I could just, you know, right away, my partner said, he's like, what did you put on your face? You smell so good. And he has uh, some acne. And, and I said, put that on that acne. And like in three days, it was gone. He has adult acne, you know, here and here and here. And every now he touches his face a lot. And it was gone like that. Uh, you know, the, the people, well, uh, I will send you an email with a couple of pictures where, you know, if something shows up in different spots on your body, it tells you what is wrong inside. It's, it's your uh, telegraph messenger. Suppose you have it somewhere here, it's something to do with the liver, uh, somewhere here or something to do with the heart, all that stuff. Very interesting. Oh, I would love to see that because, yeah, he gets it over here and a little bit. Yeah. So that would be great to know. Well, thank you so much for everything that you do. I hope we get to have you back because, you know, we we could really get into the whole genetic sequencing and the genes. One of the things uh, we have done is uh, just uh, I'm just you know analyzing all the data. We have now shown that you can add it to cells and also produce the genes that can possibly repair the heart. See, oh, once you get a heart attack, wow. Once you get a heart attack, it's damaged. Then you, a scar is left behind. Right. But there are certain genes, if you can produce them, which can regenerate this and fix the scar. So, you know, I'm, I'm talking to a couple of professors in Europe and uh, Japan who do this kind of work to see if they will do it, you know, because this is, they have patients so who already had heart attacks. They can just use the spray and they can measure going forward whether the scar is healing or not because it is safe, you know. So. And the perio, peri, pericarditis and myocarditis, is that going to yeah. help with that too then? Yeah. Great. I look forward to telling many more stories from my friends and family who are now, you know, going to be taking the product as well. So I implore you people, I've been doing this a long time, take a look at this supplement. It is incredible. And, uh, be their testimonial for yourself. So thank you, Dr. Raghu. We'll we'll hope to see you again. Yep. 